together before all the football and eating starts to share together some of our time of Thanksgiving. We're going to be old tech, low tech, we're using our hymn books tonight. And our first hymn is number 790. <coughs> Thank you. Glad and rejoice, for God has done great things. Our mouths are filled with laughter and shouts of joy. A harvest, harvest of abundance surrounds us. We will eat, eat in plenty and be satisfied. satisfied. Praise God for all the bounty we enjoy. Give thanks for every good and perfect gift. We, we lay aside our worries and our fears. God has dealt wondrously with us, and we rejoice. Seek first God's realm of righteousness. Let God reign in all your thoughts and relationships. We know God is with us here. We trust God to supply what we most need. Amen. We're going to do just two verses of Count Your Many Blessings. Does anybody not know this? Rachel didn't know it, so now she's learned it. <laughs> and that's on number 786. We'll be singing verses <coughs> one and three.
Thanksgiving Eve service to give you a chance to say out loud something or some things for which you're thankful. <clears throat> I won't make you come up and get in front of the camera. <laughs> but um, there was one gentleman in the Baptist church I was in in Portsmouth. And every Thanksgiving Eve service, he always stood up and thanked God that he was saved when Pearl Harbor happened and he was in Hawaii. That was great, but I wanted to say, what's God done for you the last 50 years? <laughs> so, <laughs> who has something for which they're thankful for? They don't have to stand up even, just share. Church family. Church Amen. family. Amen. And that's from Susan, who's here from New Life. I've known her for a long time, and she comes up and spends Thanksgiving with Wanda. What else? I'm thankful for Rhonda, my children, and my grandchild that now, by now, have 59 days before he gets out. Oh, I'm not counting or anything. Nine days and waiting for the grandchild. Hallelujah. What else? <coughs> Don't maybe have to call on you. Well, thank you for my family of choice and friends for and forever and ever, and for you and for Rudy and mostly the thing today. I'm really thankful for the memories that I have of the Thanksgivings and and Christmas. The two Thanksgivings that my family had before my mom died. It was a really special time. So I'm thankful for those memories. else? I'm thankful for my chosen family of the Lonkers. I spent many, many, many Thanksgivings with them. And I'm most thankful that I found a home here in this church. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Kathy, also family and friends in our church family. And there's really so many, it's hard to name, but we have plenty of fur critters. Yes. And, uh, I'm very thankful for them. Uh, I have a home I get to go home to. There's food to eat, um, safe. I would say sound, but y'all might question that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I just, I, I Did you say one. sound or sane? Yeah. <laughs> Two. Yes. What and else? plenty of friends to ridicule. Yes. <laughs> yes. Amen. I'm thankful for Rudy. I'm thankful for Joanna. I'm thankful to be here in Roanoke again. Yes. That's yes. the time I am. Uh, <laughs> And thankful for an opportunity for a church that will let us have services that aren't necessarily in the lectionary, but that we can have services like this. Anyone else? Go ahead, Robert. I don't know. I probably have a ton, too. Of course, I'm thankful for Wendy. Thankful for my church. Friends that have came back to the church that I miss so much. Um, my family. Um, my business. My abilities that God's granted me to be able to do so many different things in my life. Um, I guess mostly I'm thankful that I'm a Christian yes. and that I have that, you know, uh, thing that I can always look back on when times are hard or when you're upset about what's going on in the country <laughs> or, you know, we got to throw that in there because it's kind of crazy right now. We should be thankful every day, not just Thanksgiving. Right. But, you know, every day we have to be thankful for something. Even when, our time, when times are hard, I always think this what gets me through every day is just to think about something that I'm thankful for every day. Yes. yes. I'm thankful that the Lord has put these two in my life. <laughs> They're very good friends. I'm thankful for the many friends that he has put in my life and my brother down in Florida and the Baptist. <clears throat> There's a psalm that if your Bible has little headings in it, it's called a psalm of thanksgiving. And I always think of this as being part of a thanksgiving service. It's Psalm 100 that many of you probably learned in school, but I'm going to read it to you from the Message Bible. On your feet. <clears throat> On your feet now, applaud God, bring a gift of laughter, sing yourselves into God's presence. Know this, God is God, and God is God. God made us, we didn't make God. We're God's people, God's well-tended sheep. Enter with the password, thank you. Make yourselves at home, talking praise. Thank God, worship God. For God is sheer beauty, all generous in love and loyal always and ever. I love that all generous in love.
and loyal to us always and always. Let's try number 169, give thanks. I'm sorry, is it 170? Thank you. Need all the help I can get. It's a neat little chorus, maybe you probably know it. Uh, we were talking about maybe starting to use this as a doxology at some point. to give you something to take home to remind you of what you heard tonight, to remind you about Thanksgiving. I want to read a psalm, part of Psalm 37 to you, because it kind of leads into the point of this. <clears throat> psalm 37, verses 23 to 26. The strong one walks in step with God. Their path is blazed by God, and they're happy. If they stumble, they're not down for long. God has a grip on their hand. The psalmist says, I once was young, and now I'm a gray beard, or hair. <laughs> not once have I seen an abandoned believer, nor his kids out roaming the streets. Every day, that one is out giving and lending, and their children make them proud. In the King James, it says, I've never seen one of God's children begging bread. One of the things that we talk a lot about at Thanksgiving is the landing of the pilgrims in Massachusetts. And we've heard that story told slantedly for many years, and I'm not going to re re revise that for you. <clears throat> but one of the things that's true is when they landed, it was in November. And they expected to land a little further south, and they landed in one of the coldest parts of Massachusetts in one of the coldest parts of the year. They were too late. They couldn't plant crops. They had to really live on what they had brought with them, which was running low very quickly. Their supplies were dwindling. Not long after that, another ship came, and they were hoping for provisions. That ship came not with provisions, but with 35 more mouths for them to feed. Don't you know they were welcomed wholeheartedly? <laughs> But for a long time after that, after their next harvest came in and things were plentiful, when they would have their meal of Thanksgiving, it became a tradition to put five grains or five kernels of corn beside each plate. Because at the worst time for the pilgrims, when food was the least available, each person was given five kernels of corn for their daily ration. Now, I surely hope it was bigger kernels than this. You know, I've seen crumbs bigger than this. But that's what they subsisted on for a while. Can you imagine? Not a half a loaf of bread, not a slice of bread, but five little kernels of corn. 
And in so often, tradition over the years develops a story around it, besides just that, just this. <clears throat> and they begin to share what each of those kernels stood for. And it became the tradition that the first corner kernel was to remind them that God loved them. Because during all this time of deprivation, people died from illnesses, but no one person starved to death. That first kernel would remind them that God loved them. The second kernel was to provide them that God provides for our needs. They had seen that. They had seen that. The third was to be thankful for the friends God has given us. Kind of some of the things we've already mentioned, mentioned ourselves. The fourth was to be thankful for the people God has given us who show us love. And the last kernel was to remind them that God hears their prayers and answers them. We probably could attach different meanings to these grains for ourselves, although those five cover it quite well. I've never been to the point where I've had five grains of corn, but I've told you about the tuna gravy. That's my bottom line. <laughs> but there have always been times when each of us have been in need, financial need, Perhaps food need, perhaps emotional support need, spiritual need. And yet I know most of you well enough to know that God has met those needs. Maybe not in the way we expect, but God has met those needs. Think about the people that come to our food pantry every Thursday. And how appreciative they are of what we have to give them. And it's not a lot. I heard a couple of stories about those of you who delivered turkeys and boxes on Sunday tell one story, since Pat's not here, I can tell it. Um, it's not bad. They went to one person's house and the name they had on the card, they knocked on the door and asked for Joe Smith, that wasn't his name, and the man said, he's not here, he moved. And Pat said, well, when did he move? He said, yesterday. And she goes, okay. And they kind of turned around and Pat said, wait a minute, it's obvious this folks needed food. And she turned back around, knocked on the door and said, would you still take this turkey and food? She said the man could not stop thanking her from the time she handed it to him until she got all the way back to the car. Oh. People need, people need not just food, they need friendship, they need emotional support. Sometimes they just need somebody to look at them and show them that they exist, that they last, that they're a part of our world. <coughs> so I don't know what you'll be doing with your corn. You can leave it in the back if you don't want to take it with you. But I hope that if, the, if at least the memory will remind you that even with the barest of provision, God took care of those folks. And even with the barest of provision, God will take care of us also. We're going to be having different meals tomorrow. Some of you will have turkey. Some of you will have ham. Some of you may have a peanut butter sandwich. I don't know. But there's a meal that's called Eucharist, which means Thanksgiving. It's a part of our service every Sunday here at church. And very few of us will be eating together tomorrow. But I wanted to have a time when we would share this meal tonight. In a minute, I'm going to uh, ask Jeff. He's going to come hold for me. And while Rachel plays quietly, and by the way, I'm very thankful for Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> while, the, while Rachel plays quietly, I'm going to invite you. If you want to share a meal with me, if you want to have the Thanksgiving meal, I'm going to invite you to come forward, and I'll be glad to share my meal, the meal of Christ, with you. We know how important this meal was to Jesus, how it was the last meal, the last Thanksgiving he shared with them. He took the bread, and he blessed it, and he broke it, and he invited them to come. He said it was for everyone. He took the cup, and he blessed it offered it to everyone. One of the things I love is that this meal is not my meal. It's not your meal. It's the Lord's meal, open to all of us. I invite you to come. Responsive reading type. Let Thanksgiving continue every day you live. Find joy in the wonder of God's generosity. We, we, we will be, be glad, glad and rejoice in our God. We seek to follow in the footsteps of Jesus.
Christ leads us toward knowledge of God's truth. Our worth is affirmed in the joy of discipleship. Our, Our prayers, prayers of thanksgiving, thanksgiving will continue. continue. We will, we will lift up intercessions for others. We are, we are stewards of all these blessings. blessings. Amen. God bless you. Enjoy your Thanksgiving.